Hey YouTube, it's Algoman, and in this video we're going to be discussing how to convert an RSI indicator into a trading strategy to determine whether that indicator is a robust tool in your arsenal for day-to-day -day trading. So let's go ahead and dive right into this, okay? So you've heard me tell you before many times the only way that you can actually tell whether, whether or not the tools that you're using are actually robust or not for the application of day-to-day -day trading is to convert those indicators into strategies and then run them, run them and find out whether they're robust or not. So I'm gonna show you guys the process of how to do that. Here on my screen, you're looking at a basic RSI indicator, and this is in easy language by TradeStation, okay? Now, it may look a little bit intimidating because you got all kinds of stuff in here, but let me break it down for you. It's pretty simple, all right? You've got your price, which is based on the closing bar. You've got your length, your oversold, your overbought, and some color inputs right here. Beyond that, you've got your variables, your plot statements right here, and some color criteria right here at the bottom. So the first thing we're gonna do with this long piece of code right here is we're gonna go ahead and select it all and copy it. <clears throat> I've got an open tab right here designed to create a strategy. So we're gonna go ahead and paste it in there. And the first thing I'm gonna do when I look at this, I'm gonna get rid of all the stuff that I don't need, okay? That's not gonna be part of the strategy logic. So I'm gonna get rid of that right there. I'm also gonna get rid of this display name and tool tip stuff here that uh, TradeStation likes to uh, use. <clears throat> and then I'm just gonna clean this bad boy up. Oh, forgot these two right here. Clean it up a little bit. <clears throat> One thing that I like uh, adding on uh, my strategies as a beginning date because I don't like my strategies just starting at some random date in the past. I want it to start on a date that gives me control as to where the strategy begins. Okay, so let's go ahead and add that. It's going to be the beg date. The trade station uses the 124, the one followed by the year convention. Okay, as far as determining uh, and uh, applying the date right here. So it's 124, 24 being the year, followed by the month, followed by the date right there, okay? So what I'm telling it is that I want the strategy to begin on the 3rd of January of 2024 this year, all right? So let's complete this section. Put a few more commas right here and a semicolon. Now let's uh, dive into the uh, strategy, strategy logic component of it. So if the date is greater than or equal to the beginning date, then we're going to go ahead and begin the strategy. But I also want to make sure that this um, executes at a certain time of the day as well. So if the time is less than 1600 which is 4 p.m. Um, Eastern time that's the uh, closing of the cash market okay then we're gonna begin the strategy right there <clears throat> okay here's where the actual logic begins so what I'm telling it here is that if the date is greater than the beginning date which is greater than January 3rd 2024 and if the time that you begin the strategy is less than 4 p.m., then the strategy is gonna go ahead and execute. Pretty simple. Now, if the, if the RSI value, because this is what we're plotting right here, remember, we're plotting the RSI value, the overbought, and the oversold right here, okay? If the RSI value crosses over the oversold, then we're gonna buy next bar on the open okay and if the RSI value crosses under the overbought then we're gonna sell short the next bar on open okay I also want my strategy to end at the end of the date. If you don't have 
a specific time frame set up, then the strategy is going to give you skewed results when you run it. Uh, because then what will happen is the strategy will run from one day into the next. So you want the strategy to end at the end of the uh, cash market session. In my case, it's if time is equal to 1600, ah, then begin. If your market position is equal to one, then you're gonna <coughs> sell next bar on open, okay? And if your market position is equal to minus one, then you're gonna buy to cover next bar on open, okay? Pretty simple. Huh, you know what? Let me see. I got one, two, I got a few of these here. I almost forgot my ends right there. And I've got another end here because I got one beginning statement right there. <clears throat> okay. Easy. Simple. Okay. So if everything is correct here, okay, I've got all my commas. I always make sure I got my commas and my semicolons because that's always going to give you an error if you miss one. And my, my trading logic seems to be correct the way I've said it. If the RSI crosses over the oversold, then buy the next bar at the open. And if the RSI crosses under the overbought, then you sell short the next bar open, okay? Pretty standard, pretty simple. And if it's all correct, boom, it verified. So done, all right? So let's go ahead and apply this bad boy onto a chart, okay? So we had an example right here. And we're gonna go ahead and optimize this strategy from five to 21. I'm running this on a 15 minute chart. Okay, so I'm, what I'm telling the strategy I wanna do is I wanna use a period of five to 21 bars looking back, okay? And we're gonna also optimize the oversold and the overbought levels as well. From 25 to 45 in five step increments, and from 60 to 80 in five step increments as well. So you got a total of 425 tests, okay? You unfortunately can't use a genetic algorithm when you have this little test, but again, we're only testing this from January 3rd to the present date, and that's the reason why you only have a small number of tests, okay? So let's go ahead and give this a run. We gotta make sure we've got 270 bars as your max bars back on trade station just to make sure you don't get an error when you run this and let's go ahead and click optimize bam there you go let's go to the beginning of the year see how this bad boy traded not bad look at this okay this is right on january the third okay Very nice trade. Got a loser right there, got another one right there, got another one right there. Sideways action, okay. Got a loser there. You'll have losers, but you also have some decent winners like you do right here, all right? So overall, it looks decent just by eyeballing it but you can't really tell by eyeballing it right the real meat and potatoes is right here guys in your data performance report click on that this strategy okay from january 3rd 2024 to the present date okay had a 61 percent win rate with a profit factor of 1.80 and net profit of over seventeen thousand dollars not bad it's over my 50% threshold that I like to see on strategies. But let's look at this closely as to what were the components that led to the 61% win rate, okay? If we go over here on this column, we're gonna notice that <clears throat> the long side of the trade had an 80% win rate, which is really good. The short side of the trade had a 53% win rate, which is eh, eh, so, so, right? 
So the blended win rate is 61%. That's how they came up with that, all right? So when you're looking at this, you might consider saying to yourself, well, I may just use the RSI for long entries, okay? That's it, you know, long entries and you'd have, you know, something there that you can perhaps work with, right? You can also use the inputs that you got from your RSI from having uh, optimized it, which is 6, 25, and 60, and you can use these to tune your indicator right here because these indicators come out of the box at 14, 30, and 70, okay? So if you just use these standard settings that come out out of the box from the indicator, you're gonna have some bad entries and exits, okay? So you don't wanna do that, which is part of the reason why you get your indicator, you optimize it, you convert it into a strategy so that your input settings are optimized to the, you know, the type of data that you're applying it to, okay? So in this case, we've got 6, 25, and 60. And there you go right there, okay? So one of the uses of converting your indicator into a strategy is to A, determine robustness of the indicator. Now, you, if to do that, you wanna go further back. You wanna go at least two years uh, to determine that, okay? I'm giving you a very oversimplified approach on how to do it, but it's up to you as a trader to be prudent and go back further in time. Two years is plenty of time to determine robustness on any uh, particular strategy, okay? Uh, secondly, you can go ahead and use the optimized inputs to tune your indicators right here. Um, or you can use them um, together. You can use the strategy as well as the indicator right here uh, to help you determine your entry and exit points. One thing that's important, guys, is that these are Optimize values based on these back tests and you're looking at data that's static. You're basically driving forward looking at the rear view mirror and past performance is not indicative of future results, okay? So you, your past data which is static is not gonna be the same moving forward, okay? So in order for you to actually get robust results and to actually apply uh, these robust results to um, intraday trading, what you want to do is you want to walk forward, optimize your results, okay? Now, if you walk forward, optimize the results, it's a completely different process right here in the optimization window, but that's a topic for a different day, all right? Um, that would require more data than 425 tests, of course, and you know, you'd probably want to go back a year or two, um, walk forward, optimize it, and compare those results to your uh, to your back tested results. They're going to be different because your walk forward optimization is um, is looking at unseen data that uh, your strategy hasn't yet seen. Okay, and it's picking a number the day before and applying it to the next day's trading to determine whether or not um, the the strategy is going to be successful. Okay, I wrote a whole article on walk forward optimization on my website, the Algo Trader that live that you can delve into it and get more details on how that works okay uh, but highly recommend you do read it but for now um, I just wanted to leave you with a very simple template on how to convert your indicators whether it's an RSI a MACD or anything else that you guys are considering using as part of your day-to-day -day arsenal for trading guys you owe it to yourself to use the best tools okay don't be like most traders that just randomly pick numbers out of thin air to try to see whether they can eyeball it. No, the right approach is to convert your indicators into strategies, run them to see if they're robust, okay, then apply those settings to your indicator to make to make them work and make them more uh, robust, okay? Hope this uh, tutorial helped someone out there. And if you liked it, please do me a favor and give it a thumbs up. It really does help and shows your appreciation. Thanks again, and I look forward to the next video.